What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. Time's come once again for another episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship. Today an old friend of mine, Mr. Donald Adams, requests we crack open our copy of Inner Sea Gods to talk about one of the few remaining core deities for us to discuss together, Irori. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, remember to hit that like and subscribe button today. This episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship was brought to you, in part, by 360 Mac Gamer. Or, you know, Greenwich Colony's GM. Or Tarask Jaw over at Three Dragons. Big supporter and friend of the channel. Thanks so much for your help, dude. Now let's hit it. So, in the Buddhist religion, a long time ago, a man by the name of Siddhartha Gautama transcended the mortal world by following the middle way a path of moderation away from the extremes of self-indulgence and self-mortification, or the Noble Eightfold Path. In Pathfinder, it's almost a one-to-one. -one. Irori is a Vudran man who achieved divinity literally by being the most perfect him he could be. He was once a mortal man whose intense discipline, and intense truly you would need to be, allowed him to attain enlightenment and divinity through physical, mental, and spiritual perfection. He teaches that mastery of the self allows one to master the world, but paradoxically also purges one of the desire to master it in the first place. Irori encourages his followers to challenge their minds, bodies, and souls in order to transcend their self-imposed limits. Of course, he's also a god of knowledge, and as such, his followers are keen students of history. Because, you know, that's one of the few knowledge checks a monk gets, right? Knowledge history? In any case, Irori knows that there's no single technique that works for everybody, and that every student must experiment and practice to find the best method for them. Irori is patient, forgiving, and serene, welcoming all who seek perfection as brothers and sisters. Originally, Irori came from the continent of Vudra, but since then he's gained a diverse following across the inner sea region, truly across all of Galarian. And now let's talk about it, shall we? Irori is, as one might guess, lawful neutral. His domains are healing, knowledge, law, rune, and strength, with the subdomains competition, education, knowledge, fist, yeah, of course the monk god has the subdomain fist, inevitable, language, medicine, memory, resolve, restoration, self-realization, strength, and thought. His favorite weapon is the unarmed strike, and his symbol, a blue hand. To perform Aurori's deific obedience, over the course of one hour, spend an equal amount of time practicing with a weapon or your unarmed strikes, reading any text that you have never read before, and braiding a length of hair while contemplating the mysteries of the multiverse. Hang the length of hair around your neck when your obedience is complete, and wear it for the rest of the day. In return, you gain a plus four, sacred or profane, depending on your alignment. Bonus on all knowledge checks. Yeah, did you know the bards liked Rory? I didn't either, but there it is. Anywho, evangelist boons grant us identify three times a day, boxes cunning twice a day, or secret page once a day. At 16th level, for a number of rounds per day equal to your hit dice, you can infuse your limbs with the power of pure law. Your unarmed strikes deal damage as if you were one size category larger, ooh, nice, and gain the axiomatic weapon special ability. Activating or dismissing this ability is a free action, and the rounds don't need to be consecutive, but, you know, when your 1d6 needs to become a d8, when your 3d6 needs to become 3d8, off you go. At 20th level, nine runic tattoos appear on your body, three for each of the three disciplines of Irori, mind, body, and spirit. As a standard action, unless otherwise noted, you can discharge the power stored in a tattoo. Once spent, the tattoo's power returns gradually over the course of a week. The body tattoos are two out of three, cure serious wounds, one, restoration, all of which spell-like abilities for you. You can discharge two of your mind tattoos as a swift action to allow you to re-roll a saving throw against an enchantment spell or effect that's really powerful. You must use the ability before you learn the result and you have to take the second even if it's worse. You can also discharge the third to get a plus four sacred bonus to your wisdom, to your will save, to your armor class for a minute that's, yeah, no, this is really powerful. Monk Evangelist of Aurora, here we go. Spirit Tattoo gives us Ethrealness from two of them, and the third one gives you SR 
equal to 10 plus 1 for every hit dice you possess. Disgusting. I play a lot of monks. Didn't know that existed, though. I'm in love. Anyway, Exalted Boons. It's hypnotism three times a day. Day's monster twice a day or once a day. Suggestion. At 16th level, up to three times per day. When you cast a Conjuration healing spell with a range of touch, treat it as having a range of close. And at 20th level, you hover several inches off the ground as if levitating. This doesn't affect your speed and makes you immune to most kinds of difficult terrain, traps triggered by pressure and potentially other bad things on the ground. You can levitate over solid surfaces only, so you'd fall if you step off a cliff or over like water. You can, however, raise or lower yourself as levitate. If you make an attack while hovering, you aren't subject to the attack and damage penalties, but if you move higher in the air using a move action, you are in fact subject to those penalties. But anyway, Sentinel Boons. It's True Strike once a day, False Life twice a day, or Haste three times a day. So that's probably backwards. I'm reading this in Archives of Nethys. I feel like that's once a day Haste, thrice a day True Strike. It's even written the other way. That had to have been a typo. A typo I see now is also in Inner Sea Gods. That's fun. Anyway, 16th level. The knowledge you've gained over the years regarding different creatures lets you strike your foes with unerring insight. As a standard action, you can study your opponent during combat, a task which requires you to succeed at a knowledge check which we buffed by 4. Hurrah! Related to the enemy's type, the DC is 10 plus their hit dice. If you succeed at the check, you gain a plus 2 bonus on weapon attack and damage rolls against that enemy. If you fail at a knowledge check, you may try again with another action, but it's a minus two for every attempt after. And finally, at level 20, you develop your body to such a degree of physical perfection that you become almost untouchable by the ravages of toxins and disease. You gain a plus four sacred or profane bonus on saving throws against poison, magic and supernatural diseases, and spells and effects that cause ability damage, ability drain, or negative levels. You also become immune to non-magical diseases. Yeah, no, I think truly evangelist wins. That's super powerful. Now, Irori is lawful neutral, and so you can have paladins of Irori, and truthfully, there is an Iroran paladin archetype. However, Irori does not have a paladin code. At first I thought we were brewing, but if you take a look at that archetype, you'll see that Iroran paladins meditate on self-perfection and train relentlessly. As such, Irori offers no universal paladin code. Each paladin in his service creates his own code as part of his spiritual journey. Seeing the adherence to such a self-formulated creed as one of the many tests one must face to reach perfection. And if that doesn't fit the Buddha of Pathfinder, I don't know what does. And for his divine gift, it's a plus one permanent untyped bonus to your con deal. I'm in. Honestly, these are a lot more powerful than I thought they would be. At least the evangelist one. The other two aren't bad, but no, that one just wins all the good abilities right there. Perfection is the aesthetic. And really, on that note, that's what I like the most about Irori, I think. Irori is a widely accepted god in Galarian and throughout the entire Inner Sea region, but he also represents, though we don't talk about it a whole lot, representation. We have our Eastern gods, of course. We've talked about them here on the channel, but they're not mainstays, they're not in the limelight, not like Eomade to Esmodeus and back again. And the fact that Irori is so, well, frankly, Buddhist, on Galarian, in the face of all the other gods that embody more Western aspects of lawful good, that's really amazing to me. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that really, really appreciate that. Now, followers of Irori in my games, Though I've had one that mostly was just a paladin who wanted a god that wasn't a Yomade. Long story. But that's probably what we're doing. We're sitting down and we're gonna come up with, oh, eight or so things that your character is striving to adhere to. Adhere to them, I'm more than willing to give you more monk powers or whatever class it is you're playing. Have I played a follower of Aurori? No, I have not. I've played a million monks, but usually they end up being monks that are not religious, or in one case, irastal worshippers, because need all that wisdom to my bow damage right now, please. And I think a part of that is, to coin a phrase, most of my monks were played when I was roll, R-O-L-L, playing, not role playing. And I'd love to go back again and play a monk in first or second edition with this knowledge, because, you know, 
knowledge is power and the path to my character being able to punch a wall down in one. But what do you guys think about Irori? Have you worshipped him? Is he often involved in your games? And how do we feel about Eastern religions mixing with our Western themes in the role-playing world? Throw it down in the comments, let me know all about it, and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. But that's all we have for today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We've got a patron request coming down next week. Michael was nice enough to put his request down a couple weeks so other people could get in. Next week, it's all about Haridi. I'll see you then.